the actual uh, correct title of my paper is Yiddish Literary Series, Bibliotheken for the East European Yiddish Reader, 1888-1914. In the first half of the 19th century in Western and Central Europe, and even much later in Eastern Europe, a powerful polarity characterized the gap between literary mass culture <coughs> that was usually described as seductive and even dangerous, <coughs> and literary high culture that was appropriated by noblemen and intellectuals. High quality literature was usually inaccessible for the layman. The so called masses were mainly interested. <laughs> in, um, <laughs> Where was I? The so-called masses were mainly interested in the widespread time novels or Schundliteratur. With the passage of time, intellectuals in both parts of the continent understood the importance of enlightening and educating the common people by offering them high-quality culture. This was enabled by distributing large series of affordable books or booklets for a relative wide audience. These sets presented classic authors as well as non-fiction or popular scientific works in uniform shape and size. They were branded with attractive titles that would be easily recognizable and secured consumer loyalty by assisting readers to select their desired book. Occasionally, large reading of anthologies were uh, published parallel to these series. Together, these, pub these publications helped to create modern insights into the literary canon. This, was, this new type of serious literature was more than entertainment and was aimed at national, social, and cultural goals. It also gave the readers access to public discourses and concepts with current re uh, relevance. In the Yiddish cultural sphere, Sholem Aleichem was the first to initiate two anthologies of contemporary Yiddish writers under the title The Yiddish Volksbibliothek, 1888-1889. Sholem Aleichem couldn't afford to publish by himself any further volumes of the series. It was then that Yud Lamed Peretz in Warsaw filled the void left by Sholem Aleichem by publishing his Yiddish, the Yiddish Bibliothek in 1891-1895. to which lasted only for not more than three volumes. A much more successful initiative was then launched in Warsaw by Avrom Leitch Shalkovich, better known as Ben Avigdor. As an enthusiastic Hebrew cultural activist, he published a series of 25 booklets of the best contemporary realistic Hebrew works under the title Sifrei Agora, Penny Books. One of the contributors to this series was a young author from Vilna, Yitzhok Goido, who became later famous, a famous Yiddish crit critic known as Beis Gorin. Motivated by the success of Sifrei Agora, Goido went back to Vilna and initiated a similar project, but in Yiddish, between the years 1893-1894. Goido's series was called Bibliothek Kleine der Zeilungen, the Library of Small Stories and contained five booklets with a clear socialist message. At the same time, the first Jargonische Komitee, the Committee for the, the, committee for the Advancement of Yiddish Culture, was established in Vilna, aiming to upgrade the Yiddish cultural life there and elsewhere. The committee cooperated with the Yiddish activists and publishers, Avrom Kotik and Alter Bressler in Warsaw, to launch a new series Wissenschaftliche Volksbücher, scientific popular books. These booklets were edited in Vilna and printed in Warsaw and were mainly dedicated to popular scientific works that were translated and adapted from foreign languages. <coughs> so here we see a sample Ode Marisens Deures, Ode Die Vorhistorische Zeit von Menschen. And the series contained Wie haben Menschen gelebt mit einige Teusen Tior Zurich, Erzählungen wegen wilde Menschen, Arbeit und Kapital, Winterovenden, which is a basic chemistry, wegen Luft, and so on. 
Uh, maybe I sit and see better. In a minute, we'll, we'll need to, to, to watch it again, so it, it doesn't matter. In the last two years of the 19th century, Lazar Zuckerman. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. okay. So, in the last two years of the 19th century, Lazar Zuckerman, the heir and successor of his father, the bookseller and publisher of Ron Zuckerman from Warsaw, published a small series, Zuckerman's Volksbibliothek, <coughs> of only four booklets, all adaptations The Merchant of Venice, Dreyfus on the Devil Island, The Eternal Jew by Eugene Sue and the gold makers by Johann eh, Schoffer. Zuckerman's series included also six booklets about health, health and hygiene under the title Sei Gesund. <laughs> it should be noted that simultaneously there was in the turn of the 20th century a vibrant book market of suspenseful and fascinating cheap book, booklets uh, in, in Yiddish that were distributed in ten, tens and occasionally in hundreds of installments. These functioned mainly as an escape reading of everyday trouble. Nevertheless, this did not put a hold to the growing demand among Yiddish readers for serious bell letters and popular scientific works. works. Numerous series in this vein were published then in the big Russian and Polish Jewish literary centers. A Jewish musician from Vilna, Yitzhok Pirozhnikov, established a publishing house in 1900. He published a series, <laughs> Pirozhnikov's Bibliothek Barimte El Seilugen, <clears throat> Pirozhnikov's Library of Famous Stories, quote, in small and elegant volumes, end of quote, of 12 stories translated into Yiddish from Russian, Polish, German, French, English, Italian, and Swedish, as you can see <coughs> here. A, a publishing house in Petersburg, bearing the name Dinaya Bibliothek, 1903, planned to publish numerous translations into Yiddish from world and Hebrew teaching activity in Eastern Europe. One can easily notice a serious attitude at the audience's literary taste as well as to, the, as to the education and ability to challenge the political, social, and cultural values of the modern world. As we saw, Yiddish readers were supplied with a large variety of affordable literary and other works in series. Basically, two central considerations were taken into account in deciding what to publish. One is the ideological aspect, and the other is the commercial. Quite often, these considerations were combined, and usually there was an inverse relationship between the level of publication and the income generated. Therefore, the survival of those pub publishers who tried to publish high-quality literature was more problematic <coughs> than, than that of the colleagues who published romantic tales, Hasidic hagiography, or fantastic novels. Publishing bibliotheque could be considered less risky in the short term, but more obligating on the long term. Therefore, the number of Yiddish bibliotheque was relatively high up to 1914, but only those publishers who had a financial ability such as Litsky, Shimin, and Yatskan could maintain and develop the series. Thank you very much.